Good evening, everyone. How's my tonal family doing? Um, welcome to tonight's tonal lab. It's a fun one. Everyone's favorite coach, Action Jackson. Uh, before we get into our tonal lab, I'm going to give people a few moments to come on in, join the party. Sorry, it's a little bit dark. Uh, I don't have my beloved ring light again. Oh, sigh. But we're doing the best we can. I'm also in like a bit of a dark, dark like study situation, but we're gonna make the most of it. <laughs> Hope everyone ha is having a great evening. Here we go. Okay, so just um, one update so we can save all of our time for Coach Jackson. Um, most of you saw already, super cool, but now you can do any workout from a program you want at any time you want, no matter if you're enrolled in a program already, uh, without unenrolling in your program. So super fun. You can now try Jackson's day three of go big or go home anytime you want if you're up for the challenge. <laughs> I don't know why you do that, but some people might. Um, but yeah, so you can do programs, workouts in programs as one-offs now. So enjoy that. Uh, with a hello, everyone. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, Lori. Hi, Jared. Hi, Nick. All right. Let's get into it. So Coach Jackson, Coach Action Jackson, wants to help you get over your excuses and get lean fast. He believes that every single person has the potential to achieve the most sculpt sculpted version of themselves um, through an, a combination of mindset, motivation, and actionable advice. Tonight, we're here, we will hear from him the truth about training on tonal for size and aesthetics. So without further ado, please welcome Coach Action Jackson. Hey, Jackson. Hey, Kate. How's it going? It's going good. Man, you have just such better lighting than me. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I got the ring light and I got some natural light coming in from the open garage door. Hopefully not too much noise from out there, but it does have nice, nice natural lighting. Yeah, you're crushing it. Well, I got to step up my game. I, my ring light, it's on its way, but you know, things take a little longer in Maine, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us this evening. I know um, we were scheduled to do this about a month ago, so the community has been waiting with bated breath to hear from you all about bodybuilding and training for size and aesthetics on tonal, so I know they're super excited. Um, let's jump right into it. Uh, you come very scientific minded background, very engineering heavy, but you transitioned to fitness about 10 years ago and you took a lot of that, what you had learned in your engineering career with you to fitness. Um, and you've since then helped thousands of people transition their bodies and have total transformations. Um, so with that, I'm just wondering if you can tell us a little bit about that and also tell me what your niche out of these thousands of, um, of clients and people that you've helped, what your niche is, where you found the most success. Sure. So my background is a double major in computer science and economics. Um, so it was very logic, engineering, math oriented, a lot of statistics. And then I worked as a software engineer at insurance companies for about seven years, helping simplify and speed up the claims uh, process with technology. But after doing that in requirements docs and writing code and software architecture, I decided to hang it up with engineering and uh, get into fitness and basically take that same very logical, quantitative, uh, structured approach. Uh, I took that over to fitness, and I think that's what sets me apart in my training. And then as far as who I tend to coach, my audience does tend to skew male, although I do work with females as well. Uh, and <laughs> pretty much every single guy I works, work with comes and says, I want to get six-pack abs, I want to burn fat and build muscle. I want to do it all at the same time and as fast as possible. <laughs> one tall order for you, but you always come right. through, right? <laughs> um, cool. Um, what, what would you say is like your secret sauce for helping all of these people transform? And I've seen your website. I mean, the transformations are incredible. The stories are incredible. The pictures don't lie. So what's your secret sauce? Sure. So the, uh, the secret sauce in building a nice foundation is what I call metabolic resistance training. Uh, that's kind of like the four weeks for fat loss program that's on Tonal. It's so mm -hmm. popular. So that kind of, yes, awesome program. That really helps build a foundation. And then I like to transition people from that once they build a base, they reduce their body fat into more hypertrophy or muscle building. Now, I do it in a two-stage process, and it's for a very specific reason. Um, are you familiar with the Salesforce Tower that's in uh, San Francisco? I am. That's our, our directional compass in SF. <laughs> right. Beautiful building, unbelievable. Do you remember when it was being built? Did you ever see it being built? 
I moved there after it was already up. Okay. So when I was there and it was being built and I'd walk by, it was this huge, massive, like, it was like a big, huge hole in the ground. It's crazy. Now that tower now stands about 1,070 feet tall, which is incredible. It's the second tallest building west of the Mississippi. But the other interesting thing about it is that foundation is 300 feet deep. So think about it. You, they had to go 300 feet down to go 1,000 feet up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have this progressive approach to my training where I like to build a foundation first with something like four weeks to fat loss. Then I like to transition people into hypertrophy or muscle building because I want to make sure that they have the necessary foundation in terms of strength, in terms of muscular endurance, uh, core stability, um, and also cardiovascular fitness. That way, when they transition to muscle building, it's going to be so much more effective. Mm -hmm. Their insulin is going to be more effective. They're, they're going to be stronger. They're going to be able to lift more weight. Their core strength will be there to stabilize their body. And also their body fat will be lower. So when they add on even one pound of muscle, it's going to look that much mm -hmm. better because they'll be leaner. Okay. Now I know this community and I know they're going to ask, um, how do you know when you're ready to transition into that more intense phase? Or is there, if you're going from nothing to training on tonal, is there like, should you take one month, two months, three months, six months? Like, can you give us any sort of range or is it, or is it different for everyone? It could be a little different from everyone because everyone starts at a different place. But I would say a typical person that comes to me, and again, if we're speaking about like a male audience, somebody who comes to me and says, hey, Jackson, I want to get fit, I want to burn body fat, and then I want to like get jacked, then usually it's going to be around eight weeks, I would say, of something like metabolic resistance training before I would transition them into more of a hypertrophy program. If you have more to lose, it could be 12 or even 16 weeks. Um, but again, it can, it can depend on people. For women, uh, again, it's the same idea. If a normal, regular woman comes to me and she has a very like standard normal physique, which is maybe just a little bit too much body fat, not quite enough muscle mass, about eight weeks, I would say, would be about perfect before transitioning. If she has a little bit more to lose, then you might have to go 12 or 16 weeks to lower that body fat enough. In terms of body fat numbers, if you really want to get quantitative and specific, which I love, um, <laughs> I like to think of guys, I, I want to see a guy at 12% body fat um, probably like on the lower end, uh, or maybe 15% on the higher end. Like they should be at least below 15 before they're really starting to think about bulking or adding on a lot of muscle. That's what I'd like to see for a woman. I want to see like 23% or lower probably. Okay. Interesting. Um, and so just for everyone watching, uh, I see this question all the time. They want to get really specific about their training right away. And I love that. I love that they're really focused on their goals. But what you're saying is, you know, when you're first getting started, just do something <laughs> better than nothing. It's prep you. Don't get too bogged down in the details, right? Yeah. So when it comes to beginners, especially if you haven't been training consistently, consistency is going to be key. And you can make a massive, I mean, incredible amount of progress um, just by working out consistently going from, you know, maybe once or twice a week or zero times a week to all of a sudden training three or four times a week, doing anything, you're going to get results. You're going to, you're going to make progress. So you could pr pretty much pick any program and, and do wonders just by being consistent. But once, once you're being consistent and now it's like, okay, I'm showing up regularly. I'm doing that. That box is checked. Now you need to get a little bit more strategic in terms of what's the next level. If you want to, again, take your body to, to that next elite level. Okay, cool. That, that's perfect. Laying the foundation for um, what people can pick up from this tonal lab if, and depending on where they are in their training journey. Um, and you mentioned a lot about training men and like men being your niche and for muscle building, but can women benefit from the same type of hypertrophy, like size, full size type training? Absolutely. 100% yes. In fact, I think women probably need it even more than men because men are going to do it anyway, but women really need to be told specifically, hey, you need to do this. Like the typical advice out there that's for women is so backwards, it really just makes my skin boil. And it just bothers me because women aren't doing the things that they should be because of the mainstream fitness advice, which sucks so bad. So the mainstream advice is like only use five or 10 pound weights, uh, avoid food because food's not good for you. So stop eating. Um, then do all kinds of spin, cardio, running, all cardiovascular things uh, are good. Burn right? those calories. Yeah. That's typical fitness advice for women, and it's so backwards. I definitely grew up with that, for sure. 
Yeah, and if you do that, what ends up happening is your strength goes, it disappears, your muscle goes, you look skinny fat uh, at best if you're thin. And then on top of that, which is really bad, what ends up happening is like your, uh, your metabolism just gets totally trashed and your um, hormones are not good. Those are in a bad spot. Got it. Okay. And so can you give us a little bit of an overview of what hypertrophy training is? Um, what kind of a training program would look like? What it means? What's actually happening in muscles when we're trying to make them bigger? Like just give us, give us an overview. Sure. Before I do that, though, I, do, I just want to mention as far as women training again, like all those negative things I said, which are terrible, if you do strength training, hypertrophy training especially, it's going to be the complete opposite. Your hormones are going to be well balanced. You're going to be healthy, fit, strong. You're going to look long, lean, sexy, like that, that ideal physique that you want. All of those things are going to be there, but you're going to be happy. You're going to be healthy and all of your hormones and, and everything are going to be great. So that's why the contrast is so important. But to answer your question about like what hypertrophy is, hypertrophy is specifically like the enlar enlargement of an organ or a tissue. Not the number of cells, but increasing volume. So when you're building muscle, you're not like increasing the number of cells in your body. What you're doing is increasing the volume of the cells. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Can you can you go into it a little bit more? Sure. So there's two different That's types good. of hypertrophy. Sit down and burn here, Jackson. It's a tonal lab. We want the details. Sure. I, that, that's why I got my notes here. I know. It's perfect. There's that engineer. Yeah. So there's two different types of hypertrophy training. There's myofibril uh, hypertrophy, which is increase in the size and the number of myofibrils in the muscle. So what that means is like there's all these things within the muscle cell. They kind of look like almost fingers like overlapping together. And by increasing those, that's going to increase the strength of your muscle. It's going to allow it to contract. Right? When you're contracting your bicep, you squeeze it. It contracts. Those things are squeezing together. So by increasing the number of those, not the number of cells, but the number of myofibrils inside, you're able to get stronger, but you're also going to get bigger as, as a result. Does that make sense? Yep, for sure. And then the second type is called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now, what that refers to is increasing the volume of the cell. It means so you have one cell, but it increases the volume of fluid within the cell. And that happens when you take creatine or if you eat carbohydrates, because what, what carbohydrates do is they pull they pull water into your muscles. Um, so like a bodybuilder, those big, huge bodybuilders, while they're strong, they're not crazy strong. So what they're focusing typically on more is this sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. That's kind of like the pump, right? Exactly, exactly. So that can happen, again, from creatine, from eating carbohydrates and getting those into the muscle cells, or just the inflammation that happens from training. So when your muscles are inflamed from training, you get that pump, that that, that, that could feel like a solid week of working out and you're like, oh, I feel, I look better. Like that's that's what's happening there. You're, you're increasing the fluid within the muscle cells. So not the actual strength, just the literal size. You could be getting a little bit stronger too, but yeah, the muscles are just getting that pumped. Okay, so I mean, I'm no bodybuilder. I've never done physique competitions, but is that why you hear people going on these like shreds, no carbs, and then at the end they eat carbs, and that's to like, is yeah, that they'll increase, boom, it'll they'll <laughs> pump up the muscles for sure. Yeah, okay, got it. And that's why people take creatine too, because it pulls water into the muscle cells, and makes them look bigger. Mm, okay, got it. And so, um, can you tell us a little bit about your program? Very popular program in the community, uh, Go Big or Go Home, and how you program that with thinking about these principles of hypertrophy and volume um, while you're programming that. And then also maybe you could talk about your new one too, Muscle Building Burnout. That seems to be growing traction in the community. Sure, sure. So as I was thinking about Go Big, Go Home, like before I get into the nitty gritty details of it, like just thinking in a general level, you have to think about which type of hypertrophy do you want to do? Do you want to focus a little bit more on the type of hypertrophy that's going to increase strength and like the size of the muscles or if you're just going to do the what the uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy so that was the first thing like thinking through okay which one of those are you going to do now a lot of strength coaches kind of disagree on whether or not you can focus on one or the other but mm -hmm. i believe you can and a lot of strength coaches would agree as well even though there's no real scientific data that points to this you got guys like Ed Cohn, who were 220 pounds, who can lift way more than 300 pound bodybuilding monsters, right? So I believe you can really focus on one or the other. And different programs 
are going to focus on one or the other. If it's more of a strength-based program, which is going to get you stronger and bigger, then that's one type of program. Go big, go home, focused on the other type, which is trying to increase just the fluid within the muscles by ripping those muscle fibers apart and then kind of bringing them back together with a nice big pump. So that's why when people get to the end of it, they're like, wow, my arms look great. Uh, and they are definitely adding muscle, but they're also just increasing the size of those muscles. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, for sure. That does make sense. That's a good distinction. Because I think people get tripped up a lot about um, increasing the strength or their muscle. And they're like, wait, isn't it the same thing? But what you're saying is like there's small nuances where you focus slightly on one more than the other. And it doesn't diminish the other. But it's just optimizing for either size or strength. Correct. 100%. Now, when I looked at Go Big, Go Home, this was kind of the, the thought process. When I got the, the RFP, which is like the request, they were like, hey, we want this old school bodybuilding program, like Arnold Schwarzenegger style. Like, let's just get nuts and, and just see how much, like how crazy you can make this for people. That was the kind of general idea going in. So I'm like, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> so I had to list out some requirements. And this is basically throwing it all back to the software. It's like, okay, what are the requirements for the program? And then go through how am I gonna actually structure this out? So I took the same approach. So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure each muscle group was hit twice per week. And the, and the reason being is because research suggests that two times per week is optimal for muscle growth. Um, one time per week is just not quite enough in order to really maximize hypertrophy, which is muscle growth. And more than twice a week could be too much and not enough recovery time for most people. So and twice a week, yeah. To be clear, that's muscle group, not workout days. Correct. That's muscle group. So that means like hitting your chest, for example, you want to make sure chest is hit at least twice per week, um, not, um, not three times and certainly not once because twice is that optimal range. Got it. For this type of training. Correct. Correct. So the second requirement I had was I wanted to stay true to those old school bodybuilding kind of exercises and style. So I didn't want to come in with all kinds of like functional fitness and like brand new stuff because this is an old school program. Let's keep it old school and let's stay true to that. Um, then the third requirement was leveraging a little bit of cool technology on total. So like let's take those old school exercises, but if we could throw in a little bit of like a cool advanced technology tonal twist is what I like to call it then even better, right? Anything that's going to help speed this process up. Then the fourth thing I needed to do was take Arnold's kind of blueprint, the kind of style that he liked to, to follow, which was like a six day a week program. Now, how am I going to turn that into like a four day a week program? Because most total users are going to be able to work out six days a week. Honestly, so, I think if you made a six day a week program, people would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us do it. if you want a six day a week bodybuilding program from Jackson. <laughs> So that was the kind of requirements. And then it was looking at things and saying, okay, what do I need to prioritize? What can I cut? Like, and I had to be ruthless about it. For example, there's no abdominal work in the program, no core abdominal work. You get core stuff from the big multi-joint movements, but it's, there's no specific abdominal training. And the reason is you just had to be ruthless with cutting things out and saying, is this a priority for muscle growth? No, it's not. Okay, boom, out. And that's also how the dreaded day three happened not because I want to torture people, but because it was like, okay, if we're going to prioritize every muscle group two, twice per week and fitting a second leg day is just not going to be possible, well, now we have to take this leg day and make it crazy and really break down those muscles as much as possible so that that way only one time per week for legs is going to be enough. It was a doozy. It was enough. Um, we've got Alvin, Chantel, Morgs, Adam, Joanna, Adam, Rochelle, D all saying six days, please. So the people want it. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking in for go big, go home too. We're looking in a way of trying to make it dynamic, uh, number of days and also like levels. We'll, we'll see if we can get there, but that would be the ultimate. <laughs> make sure you're not spilling any secrets there, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, can you, was there anything else you want to say about Go Big or Go Home? No, that was kind of the basic way I structured it. And then the kind of tonal technology that I kind of threw in there was eccentric mode, which right. was, I think it was one of the first programs that really leveraged eccentric mode. And now everybody loves eccentric mode, including me. It's my favorite feature on tonal. Like I tell this story when I sat down with Ali and he was showing me tonal, like the sketches for tonal, what it looked like, like literally pieces of paper with, with drawings on it. 
he talked about this eccentric mode thing. It was like, hey, what, what do you think about this eccentric mode? And that was the moment where everything clicked for me. My eyes lit up and I was like, whoa, like that was when I bought in, if you will. Before that, I was like, okay, cool, work out at home, technology, got it. But when he, once he said eccentric mode, I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Because I knew how powerful eccentric mode was from a scientific research perspective and building muscle, but also to think about software that can do that. Now that's cool. So that's what I threw in to go big, go home was eccentric mode to allow to overload the muscles in order to maximize muscle growth and really ramp up those old school bodybuilding exercises with that technology total twist. Yeah, and for those of you who are watching, uh, just get ready because there's more where that eccentric came from, and that's all I can say. Uh, but let's move on. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, why you don't, because when, when people think bodybuilding, they traditionally right away, and we've seen it in the community, we've seen it other places, think um, one body part, one split, like chest day, let, like back day. Can you? I, I'm not, I've never done it myself. I don't have, I haven't done the splits. Um, but can you tell us like why you chose to go a different route? Sure. So a uh, very common program is uh, called the bro split program, uh, which is one single body part per, per day. So you have international chest day on Monday, you have back <laughs> on Tuesday, you have shoulders on Wednesday, arms on Thursday and legs. Uh, I'm just kidding. There's no, there's no leg work on Friday, but you're supposed to do legs on Friday. That's the typical bro split program. And the reason I didn't do that is because that program is very ineffective for many reasons. Um, you want me to give you a little more information than that or just say it's ineffective? Uh, yeah. Uh, let, yeah. I think people will want to know what, what your thoughts are on that. Okay. So the reason it doesn't work too well is because the first reason is that you can end up overworking muscles and work them way too often depending on exercise selection. Mm -hmm. So if you end up doing you know, chest presses on Monday, but then you do close grip bench press for the arm day, and then you're doing in some type of incline press for shoulders, uh, then you end up working your chest way too much. So you mm. can work muscle groups way too often, and then they don't get, get enough rest to recover. And rest and recovery is how you get bigger and stronger. The other reason is that, depending on the exercise selection again, you might have muscles that don't get hit often enough, and are only getting hit once per week and just not to enough level. Right. That's the other thing that can happen. And then another reason is like if it's not structured correctly, you can end up doing way too many pushing movements versus pulling movements, which can cause injuries. Um, it, it's very if it's very high rep, it can cause a lot of like tendon and ligament issues. Uh, so there's a number of reasons why. But that's where expert coaching comes in. And where I think Tonal really shines is the expert coaching we have with the program design and the workouts, the way they're structured. And it's. I was going to design one. I could design one a little bit better than probably just somebody in the gym. But people in the gym just go. They tend to look around what's open, what's available. Let me go grab that. Yeah. So there's no real thought process behind it. If you really sat down and tried to do it, you could structure it correctly so that you're hitting body parts you know, enough but not too often. And you're not doing too much of one thing and not enough of another. But there'd have to be much more thought that went into it in order to structure it correctly. Okay. So I'm hearing – pattern, overuse, injuries, imbalance injuries, not enough rest time to optimize size or strength, um, and just like generally not having a lot of direction or just poorly structured. Correct. So. Correct. And I think what ends up happening, the reason it's so popular is because people just think like, it's really easy to think of like one body part per day. Okay. I'll go to the gym and do chest. I'll do back. Like it's easy yeah. to think of in their head. And most people don't ever write their training program down, which is like a huge, <laughs> huge uh, like flaw in the system, right? Not writing something down or keeping track of anything. So it's easy to kind of keep track of in your head. And I think that's why people do it. Once you start getting into splits or different body parts and stuff, now you got to like write it down on paper or like do something a little extra. So I think that's another reason why it's just so easy to think of it that way and just show up at the gym or jump on the tonal and just do that. We're so spoiled with Tonal. We have all this data tracking for us. You just walk up to it and it's there. You check your app after. It's like, oh, cool. So spoiled. <laughs> Super spoiled with Tonal for sure. It's like having a personal trainer writing down all your data right. for you right there next to you. Way more data than I ever tracked with my clients even. And I, I did a lot of data and this is so much more. <laughs> so. Yeah, I made the joke the other day in one of my workouts. I said, like, if this thing was any smarter, it would be doing my taxes, which would do this month. <laughs> 
Oh my God, can you please shoot those are due 15 days. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about how you programmed your new program, um, Muscle Building Burnout? I keep seeing it. I'm so excited to start it. I have two more days of your other program, Build and Burn or Burn and Build. I always mix those up before I start Muscle Building Burnout. So I'm really excited to jump into it. Yeah, absolutely. So there was uh, a number of research studies have, have been worked on showing um, working out to failure as being a really good method for hypertrophy. And when you work out to failure, typically the weights don't matter as much, meaning you can get just as good a results uh, if not better, working with something like 30% of your one rep max as you would with 80% of your one rep max. Uh, so the idea behind muscle building burnout is, okay, you don't need super heavy weights, but let's push our muscles to failure and then even beyond. So for example, like the, uh, on the, one of the upper body days, you end up doing push-ups on the floor at the very end, and you're doing push-ups on the floor, then push-ups from your knees, then push-ups just laying down on the ground trying to get yourself up because <laughs> your chest is just completely smoked. So it's pushing those muscles to failure and then beyond, which is a little bit of the same idea behind go big, go home. But go big, go home is focused a lot more on like, um, you know, heavier volume, like more weight, if that makes sense. A combination of that plus the lighter weight to failure. Muscle building burnout is just all about muscular failure. Like from set one to the last set, it's just go to failure, go to failure, go to failure. Maybe I'm less excited to start it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you push your body to that level, the other thing that happens, like just outside of the, the benefits that happen physically, there's a mental transformation that happens there in terms of confidence, in terms of grit, in terms of like your ability to just overcome obstacles, use self-talk, use uh, like any kind of mental ninja stuff that you need in order to just do stuff in your life that's amazing. And I'm telling you, I've seen it from time and time again from clients um, in, my, in my own life even, where when you push yourself physically, you really transform yourself mentally, but it comes from getting really uncomfortable physically. You have to be able to get really uncomfortable. And then again, all that mental psychology, all that stuff that you use to push yourself so hard physically well, now starting a business is easy. Going hard at work is easy. Managing this relationship, doing your taxes, <laughs> your taxes. all that stuff. Like, okay, <laughs> I can do that. Once you go through muscle building burnout, I can do anything, right? That's what I hear over and over again. I did this. I transformed my body. I pushed myself this hard. I can do anything. If I do muscle building burnout, will my taxes be lower? <laughs> <laughs> Or do I just have to move out of California? <laughs> you probably just have to move out of California. But if you do muscle building burnout, maybe you'll be, I don't know, like buying more supplements and you can write those off or something. <laughs> Perfect. Is there a, a difference in terms of hypertrophy training, this like go big or go home style versus the muscle building burnout style? Like which one's going to get you bigger or which one's going to get you stronger? Is is there, or are they both pretty comparable? So I built them to kind of complement each other because they're a little bit different. Go big, go home is again, huge multi-joint, big movements, heavy weights uh, in the beginning of the workouts. And then as the workout transitions towards the end, it's more like failure burnout style. Uh, muscle building burnout, again, is just failure the whole way through, but it's not quite as much uh, volume on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not, um, the leg day isn't quite as bad e <laughs> either. So okay. they're kind of built to complement one, one another. If you do go big, go home, you can certainly move into go muscle building burnout next. It's not going to be, it's not going to feel too much of the same. Uh, it's going to feel very different. Um, and it's still going to help get you good results. So I don't think that one's necessarily better than the other. They're just both good, just different. Got it. Okay. Maybe take a rest in between people. <laughs> that's, that's training altogether, right? Training is not necessarily better. There's no like best workout, better mm -hmm. workout, right? There's, there's maybe better strategies for, for a letter aligned to your goal. Like if our goal is muscle building, sure, there's better things you can do for muscle building than maybe four weeks or fat loss. Maybe that's not the, the best muscle building strategy, but anything is going to be good, right? There's no like wrong answer when you're training, especially if you're training on tonal. Mm -hmm. I remember Nicolette's like hammered in that point too. Like there's no bad movement. There's no bad workout. There's just workout to optimize your goals and to, and to lead you in the right direction. But don't like get scared of doing the wrong thing basically. 
Correct. Like I've had, I've worked with a lot of people who come to me at when they're working out five, six times a week and saying, Hey, how come I'm not getting the results you're after? Well, they're, they're, they're like 80% of the way there, but to get to the top of Everest, right? Everything, a lot of things have to come together. Now that's where strategy really comes involved. So again, if you're working out really regularly, you're, you got a good base for your fitness. Now that becomes like, okay, how do I get more strategic? What do I really dial things in? How, which exact program is going to get me there? Like, how do I pair that with nutrition and mindset? Like, that's the next level. But to start and build a great base, if you just want to, like, be healthy, be fit, have more energy, you can do anything on Tonal and you're going to be successful. For sure. Um, Anya just said, I want to do muscle building burnout, but we'll need a particular support group to get me through it. Anya, we're here for you. The to official Tonal community can be your support group. And you also have a punching bag at home. You can go over to Jackson if you still have arm strength and punch him in the arms and tell him that that was too much, <laughs> too many push-ups. <laughs> when, when, when we first started dating, she asked me to train her a couple times and I was like, sure. So this is before total, pre-tonal. I like took, took her to the gym and I started coaching her and I was like, all right, this is the next exercise. And she's like, I don't like that exercise. And I was like, I don't no. care. That's what's next. And she's like, no, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, you're the worst client ever. So who won? Did she do the exercise or not? No. <laughs> and that's her <we're> engaged. <laughs> I love it. Um, like, I you know who you're talking to? This is Action <laughs> Jackson. Everyone listens to me here. Not Anya. Um, I just want everyone to know that we're going to get to questions at the end. So Adam, I see you and we will get there. Um, cool. Let's keep going. Um, can you tell us why... Tonal would be good for someone who's looking to increase size or do some sort of like bodybuilding training. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people around the interweb say, oh yeah, it's cool, but you know, it's not be enough for me. I'm, I'm this or I'm that, or I like to train for bodybuilding or whatever. It's not, it's not going to work for me. What do you say to that? Cause I mean, I know that you haven't been going to the gym because COVID and like, look at those arms. <laughs> Well, the first thing I would say is, yeah, the proof's in the pudding. It works for me. So total, total definitely can work for you, and it can integrate into your program. That doesn't mean that it needs to be the exclusive tool that you use 100% of the time. For some people, it can be, but depending on your fitness level or maybe your goals, it might be just a piece of the puzzle. But a couple of reasons why total works so well and is so – oh, go ahead. Real quick, just before, that's a good point. Who would you say Tonal wouldn't be an exclusive training option for? Is it like a lot of people if they're lifting over a certain amount of weight or if they're training for a specific thing? Like who are those audiences who Tonal wouldn't be their exclusive training tool? Sure. So anybody who's like a strength or power athlete who's looking to really maximize how much weight that they lift, whether it's deadlifting or bench pressing or something, uh, somebody like that you might need to go to the gym for something like your deadlift day or uh, you know your back or leg day in order to get just a little bit more weight and volume. Uh, for somebody who is uh, bodybuilding and really wants to compete at like uh, either an, a very high amateur or professional level, you might need to supplement something else outside of tonal as well. Um, and then outside of that, like those are really the only exceptions of like people who are really in that elite athlete level and taking it to net, like, like me. I like to supplement tonal along with gym workouts as well. Don't tell anybody I said that, but I'll occasionally go to the gym. Um, like I'll work out on total, let's say three, four days a week, but then I'll go to the gym maybe twice a week and I'll do that on like my deadlifting day because I can deadlift like 500 pounds, not to, you know, humble brag, pat on my pat on the back, but I want a little bit more weight when I'm deadlifting than tonal can provide. So that's how I mix tonal in with my, training at the gym in order to get the best experience possible. And Tonal is really set up better, especially specifically for muscle building, than you can get at the gym. There's several things about Tonal that you cannot do in the gym that make it the perfect training partner. Uh, eccentric mode, chains mode, burnout mode, like those are three things right there that you just cannot do in the gyms, you know, safely or effectively or sometimes even at all. So with that in mind, you're going to be able to get a better experience for certain things on tonal. Like isolation movements, for example, are going to be great to do on tonal because you can overload them with eccentric mode or do it with chains mode. Um, setting up chains or even or even um, setting up chains or like even eccentric mode at the gym is just not possible for most people. 
And that's where I think tonal really shines because it can complement so well the other stuff that you're doing if you're still going to the gym. So if you are an elite level athlete who is a strong man competing in those like super hardcore strength competitions of like three deadlift, three, ma th three rep max deadlifts or um, squats, then you could complement your gym training with tonal and you can do things on tonal that you can't do at the gym that would give you a leg up on competition, but it Absolutely. wouldn't really replace it. And same for a competitive, like super amateur or like uh, elite bodybuilding bodybuilder, someone that it might not replace it, but they'd get a leg up on their competition because of things like chains mode, eccentric, burnout spotter, having it in your home. I mean, the convenience factor alone is going to help you be so much more consistent. Yeah. For, I would say probably 80% of the population easily, maybe even 90% or more, tonal is going to be all that they need. I mean, the vast majority of people, tonal is going to be all that they need. It's only going to be, you know, that exception to the rule, that person who's really trying to, you know, that elite level person who's really strong, who's super fit, who's been working out all their life and really trying to push it. Those are the people that, you know, can, can use tonal as a supplement or a complement to the stuff that they're doing in the gym. But for everybody else, tonal is going to be plenty, plenty for everybody else. And can you go into some of your, your favorite things that you get out of tonal at your home for hypertrophy training that you don't get at the gym? You kind of touched on them a little, but I just wanted to hear a little bit how you use maybe like eccentric mode or chains mode in your own training. Sure. So chains, chains mode is awesome because that's what's called accommodating resistance. So it's really awesome for building strength and power uh, through your, whether it's chest pressing, your rowing, your squatting, anything. And what that does is it optimizes the weight throughout the strength curve. So for example, if I was doing a chest press with chains mode on, as I'm at the bottom of the position, this is my weakest point in the rep right down here. But as I press up, then I can accommodate more weight and more weight's going to come onto the bar. And that's all done through software. So there's no heavy chains that you're sending up and gym stuff. And most of those things, to be honest, in commercial gyms aren't even allowed anymore. Uh, like if you go to, I don't want to name any names, but if you go to a commercial gym, you can't lug a, bu a bunch of chains in there. And it'd be so inconvenient and just start setting up chains, they would probably kick you out. Uh, and then to carry all those in the gym, to be honest, would be terrible too. So uh, <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, on tonal, it just automatically does it for you with the click of a button, which is so awesome. So as I press up, the weight gets heavier, and it that also allows it to overload a little bit on the eccentric phase too. So you're getting a little bit of that eccentric mode built in, even when you do chains. But chains is great for building that explosive strength and power. And if you get stronger, guess what? You're gonna get bigger. Right? There's a correlation there. It's not one-to-one, -one, and, and you can get stronger without necessarily adding on a ton of muscle, but there is a correlation. You get stronger, you're probably going to get bigger. Then eccentric mode is really where all the muscle building benefit is. That's, the again, the aha I had with Ali. So eccentric mode and the research is, is just incredible on this. It shows time and time again that this is a better way of training. But the problem is if you go to the gym and you try to overload the negative portion of the rep, whether it's chest presses or like, God forbid you did the squat or something, it can be very dangerous. Yeah. You would need a spotter to be there with you monitoring it. And then on top of it, it's still dangerous even with a spotter. Um, so it's not something I'd recommend. And I can tell you from experience, I've gotten hurt multiple times trying to do, you know, gnarly eccentric mode negative reps at the gym with really heavy weights. Mm. So you got a bar on your chest. You got that thing loaded up. You're trying to do negative reps. The guy can't get it off you for whatever reason. He's not strong enough to lift it. It's awkward. You're got the bar on your chest. You're, you know, dying over here. You got to get two people run over and get, you don't have to worry about that on tonal. Like it's so much safer and easier and more effective. <laughs> you're yeah, you just click the button. So <laughs> the reason eccentric mode works so well is because you're stronger than the eccentric or the negative portion of the lift. So that's like, the lengthening of the muscle. So that would be lowering the weight on a chest press. That would be lengthening your arm on a bicep curl. Uh, on a chin-up, that would be lengthening the muscle. So whenever you lengthen the muscle, you're, you're way stronger. You're up to 50% stronger on the negative portion. And I've even seen data that suggests that you can lift 1.7 times more weight on the eccentric portion than on the concentric or the positive portion. Okay, does that make sense? Yep, so getting so stronger faster to get bigger. 
Correct. So because you're so much stronger during that part of the rep and you overload that part of the rep with more weight, you're really optimizing your muscle building. And then it also what that does is it requires less ATP or energy. So ATP or energy is what like allows you to contract your muscles. And because the eccentric phase uses less of that, you can get more reps done by really focusing on the negative portion. And then that means more reps means more muscle building, more ripping apart the muscle fibers, all the good things that we want to do. The other thing that happens is during eccentric training, it causes more muscle fiber damage. So we see more muscle fiber damage during eccentric training, which increases protein synthesis, which again, just leads to even more muscle building. And this is all research-based. Like I have all the notes, the sites and stuff uh, in, in my notes here. I'm going to write a blog post on this where I'll cite all the research papers. So it's all research-based. Then the other thing that happens is eccentric training also recruits more fast twitch muscle fibers which are perfect for muscle growth. So those are all the reasons why the eccentric uh, mode works so well. And then the other really cool thing about eccentric mode is that it helps strengthen tendons and joints. So if you ever had like golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, other things, eccentric training is usually something that people, physical therapists will do. So now think about it, if you're trying to build muscle, well, tendons and joints and ligaments are gonna be crucial in the game because if you hurt those or get injured, then you're not going to be able to build muscle. Nothing's going to stop you more than an injury. But with eccentric mode, you're able to strengthen those actually, which is really cool. Amazing. And like, like I was saying, just having it in your home, that alone has helped me get so much stronger and help my muscles grow because there's no excuses. I don't care if it's raining or snowing. Well, when I lived in New England, um, I'm going to the gym either way because it's literally right there. <laughs> yeah. So... The convenience factor is unbeatable for the majority of people. It's going to allow them to cut out that commute. So no longer do they have to drive to from the gym, shower at the gym, change, do all that stuff. When you think about it, and for the some of the clients that I have that still go to gyms and work out, like I tell them, if you are to do a 45-minute workout, you got to block off an hour and a half of time. For like sure. Minimum. And if your gym's kind of far, you might have to block off two hours of time to include – um, and to include the commute, the drive to, the drive from, getting in the locker room, changing, getting out to the floor. Like by the time you do all that stuff, that's a lot of time that's involved. But with Tonal, you don't have any of that. You literally walk out your door into your garage, in my case, or you walk into whatever room the Tonal's in, and bam, you're ready to go. There's no commute. There's no driving to and from. There's no locker room. There's no none of that weird stuff. You don't have people staring at you weird in the gym, like all those weird things that happen. None of that stuff happens, which is great. I don't know. Anya probably stares at you in the gym. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, and also for someone who is training for bodybuilding or aesthetics, uh, it takes a lot of time and dedication. And so they're like, if someone's training for a comp like an amateur competition, like their whole life is bodybuilding. And for just to be able to save a little bit of time each day by having it in your home, I think is huge. Yeah, if you could save 15 minutes on each end of the commute, right? That's 30 minutes a day. And then that's an entire another workout that you can do. That's Meal multiple practice. workouts you can do yeah. by yeah. the end of the week. But another thing I want to mention about the tonal is the burnout mode, which we didn't really Ooh. talk about, which doesn't probably get enough uh, attention. But burnout mode is incredible because that's what allows you to work to that like failure point and then beyond. And now there's not a ton of research that, that backs up burnout mode or like these drop sets for being like super effective. It's weird. There's, there's, there's a lot of things when it comes to bodybuilding, building muscle, like all this kind of stuff that might not be necessarily proven directly with science because it's really hard to prove some of these things. Like to get people to do this and then the diet comes into play. Like there's so many factors that come into play. Sometimes it's hard to get really good research on this stuff. So there's not a ton of research that backs up burnout mode. But we do know time under tension is key to muscle building, and that has been that has been proven through research. But the other thing is, like, strength coaches for generations have been preaching, like, this works. So if strength coaches for generations have are are been, like, preaching this. And I know I, when I do a drop set or I do a burnout mode set, like, wow, do I, like, my muscle just feels so pumped. It feels so alive. Like, it looks good. It feels good. I mean, you just got to figure, this works. So whether it's anecdotal or not, I don't know, but it sure feels like it's working. 
Um, yeah, and so for people who don't know, because I, I, sometimes we mention these and someone's like, whoa, I would never heard of that. Um, if you want to try burnout instead of spotter, so spotter reduces the weight and then on your next rep, on the weight, if you're struggling on a rep and you pause for a second or two, spotter will reduce your weight and then jump your weight back up just like a spotter at the gym. But burnout will keep that weight reduced as go as you finish your reps. So you could just keep going until that weight dial is all the way down to five. Just, yeah, and I kind of like um, burnout more, to be honest, yeah, because yeah, same. if you can't complete the rep, the positive portion of the rep is going to be the hardest. The negative portion of the rep is going to be a little bit easier. So having that weight reduced for one rep is great. But if you have three, four, five reps left in the set, whoa, this is going to be really hard. Whereas with burnout, yeah. it gets a little bit just easier enough that you can get it up then and continue that set without completely like, you know, blasting yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely utilized it a lot during Go Big or Go Home. Um, yes. and to get to it, great time to utilize it. Yeah, you can just swipe on your weight dial. It's the little flame icon. Just hit that and your burn, burnout will turn on. Um, Chantel says, this is great. I've been afraid of going beyond beginner classes, but this is getting me excited. I'm stepping it up for my next program. Awesome, Chantel. I've been watching you in the community for almost a year now. I think you joined last November. You are ready, girl. Go get that uh, intermediate or advanced program. You're never going to feel ready. That's the thing. Whether it's trying a more advanced program, whether it's having kids, getting married, changing jobs, changing careers, all these things in life, you're never going to feel ready. That's the best advice I've ever, I've ever gotten. So before you feel ready, that's when you want to make the jump and go for it. Okay. Do everything you can to prepare, but you're never going to feel hundred percent ready, but that's when you need to just take the leap of faith. You need to go for it because what's the worst that happens? The worst that happens is, is that the workout's a little bit too hard. Maybe you need to rest a little bit longer. Maybe you need to skip a set or two or three, whatever. Like That's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. You can always back off a little bit mm -hmm. and then just finish the workout later or turn it off or whatever and do something else. There's very low risk here of trying a program that's a little bit too hard for you. You can also just exit and try a new program if you really if you if you really feel like the the movements are too complex or it's just not working for you. It's a beauty of home. Yeah, um, and the great thing is with the total community, all you got to do then is post and say, "Hey Jackson, I tried this program. If it was too little, too advanced, here's some of the things that I struggled with. Like, can you help me? And I will help you. I will post sure. your group. I will. The other coaches will post. We'll tell you maybe modify here, try this, or try this other program that's a little bit more advanced, but not quite as much. And we'll help you, we'll support you. We're there for you 110%. So go for it before you're ready. I promise it will be worth it. And we're all here to support you. Um, Debbie just said, oh my goodness, I'm such an idiot. No, you're not, Debbie. She said, had no idea what that flame is, how to turn it on. <laughs> that's burnout mode. See, that's why I explained it. Um, so what does the flame mean beside your number of workouts when you go to profile? That mean, that just means how many that's the weeks streak thing, right? Yeah, that's your streaks. Yeah, I believe that's your streaks, um, how many weeks you've worked out on total in a row. So that's a little bit different. Um, okay, Jackson, are we ready for questions? Let's we have about 12 minutes. Let's do it. Okay. I saw one up here from Adam. I'm going to try to find it. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Given what you were, this is from Adam Crouch, a longtime Tonal user, an OT Tonal user who has seen incredible results with Tonal. Um, Adam, thank you for sharing your progress with the group. I always love seeing your posts. He said, given what you were saying about the difference between training for size and for strength, once you're down to the target body fat percentage, should you alternate between size and strength programs? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is where it comes down to like what's called progressive overload and it call, comes down to like program structure. So a good expert or program that's structured for you is going to change those factors up because if you just redline on one strategy constantly, what you're going to end up happening is like progressive overload is just going to start to wear down. Progressive overload, what that means is like it means continuously putting a stimulus on your body that's challenging enough that it's going to cause your body to adapt and grow. Okay? That's why programs are like four weeks and why you consistently go through the same workouts over and over again. It's to get that progressive overload. But after a certain period, like if you did go big, go home like three or four times in a row, like that level of intensity, that same workout structure, that same thing over and over again, eventually it's going to stop working as effectively. So what I like to do with my clients, my private clients, what I like to do in my own training is kind of modulate that training. So maybe do go big, go home, then do... Um, you can do uh, raising the barbell, 
then maybe you do something like muscle building burnout, or you can then move into like power to the max if you want to focus a little bit more on strength and then come back to hypertrophy after that. So it's changing things up because that's the other thing is just keeping it interesting. Changing it's going to keep it interesting as well and challenge your body in new and unique ways. One of the things I've been working on, especially since getting tonal and getting installed in my house and the, and the quarantine at, is all these like corrective strength and you know uh, corrective exercises that I never would do before when I would go to the gym by myself. I'm like, oh, I'll do those later. Doing those now has been like really challenging and it's been really good for my body, my posture, how I feel, moving around. So you always got to find that next challenge and that's why changing the programs up from strength maybe this time to muscle building, back to strength, back to muscle building or whatever is going to be really good for you. And is that something that you kind of miss when you just focus on the bro split program? It's definitely something you miss when you focus exclusively on the bro, bro, bro split program. <laughs> and people are just habit machines. We are habit machines. So we're going to fall into the same patterns over and over again all the time. So that's why going in different programs and trying different programs out is going to be so good for you is because it's going to keep you out of that routine. And especially when you use different coaches – that's also going to be good because my style, whether it's go big, go home, muscle building, burnout, four weeks to fat loss, like I have a style, right? You, I'll, I have a general style. So if you, even if you go through all those workouts, it's still going to be the Jackson style. But by doing something with Nicolette and then maybe Natalie or Pablo or Paul or whoever, you're going to get their kind of style as well. So that's going to be a little bit more unique. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to challenge you in a different way. So that's the cool thing about on Tonal, you're able to train with so many different people who are all experts, who are just fantastic at what they do, the best in the world at this. And you're going to be able to then continuously challenge yourself, get that progressive overload, stay excited and motivated and everything, and continue to see progress. Cool. Adam, I think that answers your question. He had a follow-up, and I think you got to it. But if not, just check out the comments after Jackson if you have time. Um, Randall asked, oh, this is a good one. Um, how can you use heart rate tracking to assist with hypertrophy training? Sure. So when you're doing hypertrophy training, typically your heart rate is going to be on average a lot lower. So for example, if you're doing four weeks to fat loss, your average heart rate, I would expect it should be somewhere in the 130s, maybe low to mid 130s. Okay. So that means like 135 beats per minute. If you're doing hypertrophy training, your heart rate should be on average lower. It'll spike during a set, during a tough set. So if you're doing, let's say, go big, go home, during maybe the seventh or eighth set of front squats, when you're in the middle of that, your heart rate's gonna spike up really high, but then it, sh it should come down in between that. So you're gonna get spikes really high during hypertrophy training, but on average, your heart rate is gonna be much lower, maybe 110, 115 beats for the entire workout, that makes sense. Yeah, so you might not leave dripping in sweat, but that doesn't mean you didn't get a good workout or it's not changing your body composition. Correct. So when you're doing hypertrophy training, you will not typically leave drenched in sweat, especially if it's an upper body day. If it's a lower body day, maybe a little bit more, but an upper body day, definitely not. Um, because when you're lifting upper body, the muscles are just a lot smaller. The weights mm -hmm. you're moving are not going to be nearly as heavy. So yeah, you're not going to get that crazy sweat usually unless you're doing muscle building burnout <laughs> because I strategically placed in a couple of like burpees and mountain climbers in there to get the sweat going. <laughs> yeah, and I was looking forward to this program. But I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but typically you're not going to have the drenched sweat after a muscle building program. And a strength program is very similar. Like you shouldn't leave, uh, get off tonal after a strength program and like, oh my God, d drenched in sweat. You probably won't be uh, because again, you're focused on strength. So your rest periods are going to be a little bit longer typically, or you're going to have a corrective, like a corrective stretch or something in between the tough sets to pull your heart rate back down. Because what you want to do is you want to maximize your strength during that set. Mm -hmm. And if, like you got a set of uh, like 20 chin-ups and go big go home on, on the one upper body day. You got 20 chin-ups. That's a really tough set. You need to make sure you go into that set prepared, ready, and with as much strength as possible. So that's why the rest periods are going to be a little bit longer. It's to maximize the amount of weight that you can move and to maximize how many reps you can do and the time under tension. That's what we're really trying to do. And if you just keep going, 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 oftentimes you're not going to get to that point. You're going to really fall off a cliff really fast because you're not going to have what's, what's what's called ATP or energy in your muscles anymore. You're going to deplete that 
and you're not going to be able to contract them anymore. Yeah, I think that's a really common uh, myth or misconception. We should do a tonal, a whole tonal lab on breaking down common myths. Um, but that you, if you know, if you don't leave the workout crawling or sweating or like you just look like you just got out of the pool, then it wasn't an effective workout. And that's just not true. There's still change happening in your body. You're still changing body composition. You're still optimizing your hormones. Um, you get an afterburn effect. So. Just if you just, I want everyone who's watching, if you don't leave a workout like you're dying, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be dying after every single workout, but yeah. you certainly do still want to feel like you worked out, yeah. if that makes sense. It's that little shaky feeling. Yeah, and the stronger you get, the less you're going to feel like you're dying after a workout. So yeah. if you've gone through and done all the most advanced programs on tonal, like power to the max, raising the barbell, go big, go home, if you've done all those advanced hypertrophy programs already and you've done them pretty regularly, then after the workout, you might not feel like you're dying. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're not getting better, stronger, or bigger. It just means that your body is really strong and it's really well adapted at recovering from the workouts, which is a good thing because that means you could work out even more. Conversely, if you do feel like you're dying every workout, don't worry. If you're <laughs> a beginner and you are drenched in sweat, that's okay too. Just keep going. Your body will get more conditioned. We promise. Take your rest days when you need them. Do some yoga. Um, although yoga makes me sweat. <laughs> Coach Francis is definitely challenging with those yoga but, workouts. And she makes yeah. it look so easy, which is the no. worst. You're like, what? No, How are you doing that? Fair. <laughs> How is your leg next to your ear like that? Um, speaking of rest times, Alvin, who Alvin earlier in the talk said he's guilty of the bro splits. So <laughs> Alvin, thank Alvin, you. Alvin, you gotta comment. change that, bud. We gotta change that. <laughs> he said, is one to two minutes of rest between sets most optimal for hypertrophy training? It's a great question. So that is a great question. And there's a lot of different kind of data points on this uh, as far as what's best, what's not best, what's optimal. And typically for strength, if you're training for pure strength, really long rest periods are gonna be best to maximize strength because that allows your muscles to recover and your central nervous to recover as much as possible. When it comes to hypertrophy training, we don't care as much about letting the central nervous system completely recover as much as we want just the muscles to recover. What that means is it allows enough ATP or energy to get back into the cells so we can then execute the next set. So what I like to do and what you kind of see, uh, whether it's with go big or go home, is like you'll see certain sets where I really push you and then I pair it with a corrective exercise as like the rest period. So you're still doing something, but you're allowing that one muscle group to rest or comparing it with like opposing muscle groups or something. And again, I do this in go big, go home where it's like you do a chest press, but then you do a row. So while you're working one muscle, you're allowing another muscle to rest. So you're allowing enough rest that that muscle can recover enough that you can again hit it again. As far as if you're doing a single set workout, what's optimal? Anywhere between like 40 to 75 seconds is typically considered optimal. 40 being on much the lower end, 75 being a little bit closer to the higher end. It would really depend on how much weight you're lifting for that set and kind of what your specific goal is. And what I would do is play around with those um, rest periods a little bit. I would try 40, I would try 60, then I would try 75 and use those as different markers or variables that you can change to see what's most effective for you, to see how it feels, and then just to get a different, unique take on your on your workout, if that makes sense, and keep it interesting. Awesome. Um, Alvin, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, um, there's no like perfect rest period. Like that's what everyone mm -hmm. wants. Rest 70 seconds and then it's gonna be magic. That doesn't yeah. exist, I'm sorry. Like I wish it did, but I love doing supersets with opposing muscle groups or different muscle groups because that saves time. So instead mm -hmm. of really sitting there doing nothing, you can be working out. Or again, if you're gonna do single sets, I would focus on anywhere between 40, maybe 75 seconds on the high end. Awesome. Crystal said, definitely things on tonal I can't do at the gym. Very cool. Still love the free weights and barbell, but love tonal more. a girl. Um, says Coach Jackson, this is incredibly helpful and why tonal is the best coach's equipment and community. Dale, I just love you. I'm sending you your stickers. I haven't forgotten. They're going out tomorrow. Um, Ron says, great info. Can't wait until my tonal arrives. Ron, we can't wait for your tonal arrive too. Yay. I hope it's coming soon. It's going to be a uh, great day. Best day of his <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, life-changing, I promise. Uh, Alvin says, um, 
he loves that there's a timer between sets and, and free lift and it's a small but awesome feature. I agree. Uh, Ryan says great session. Yeah, I think we're just about at time. If I go over 60 minutes, I can't post them to IGTV. So we'll wrap this up. Um, thank you so much, Jackson, for imparting your wisdom on us. I always love talking to you. I always learn so much in our conversations and I know the community does too. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any follow-up questions, just put them in the comments or wait until Jackson's next Ask a Coach session. I, you know he's always there to help you and he's always willing to give you a little bit of his time in the community. So Jackson, thank you for always being so responsive and helpful. You're welcome. This is what I was born to do. Thank you to all the Tonal members. I love everyone in the group. I'm so happy to help any of you. Just post, tag me, whether it's to celebrate, whether you have a question, whether you need a pat on the back or even a kick in the butt. I'm always happy to help any way that I can. This is what I was born to do. So thank you all so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, Kate, but everyone in the community, thank you. Cool. Awesome. Good night, everyone. We will see you next week. Have a great evening. Bye.